Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Emacs Baby Hawk 2 HD, a 3.5 inch micro quadcopter which is equipped with the Codex Nebula Pro digital transmission system. In this video I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up, give you my feedback after testing it out and wrap up this video with some flight footage. First of all, the Emacs Baby Hawk 2 HD is available in a couple of versions, which only differ in the bundled radio receivers. You can get a plug and play version and then install your own radio receiver or use the DJI radio controller, and you can also get versions that come with pre installed AfroSky D8 or Crossfire Nano radio receivers. In addition, even though the flight controller features a built in OSD chip, which makes it compatible with analog VTXs, Currently, the Baby Hawk 2 HD is only available with the Cadex Nebula Pro, so it is only compatible with the DJI HD FPV goggles. As for packaging, inside the box, along with the quadcopter, you are getting some stickers, an Emacs branded battery velcro strap, the user manual of the Cadex Nebula Pro, and a bag with some spare screws, spacers, and nuts. In addition, the user manual is available online, and you're only getting a single set of the Emacs Scimitar 3.5 inch propellers and especially because these are non-standard propellers in case you're going to purchase the Emacs Baby Hawk 2 HD you should make sure to get some extra sets. As for its specs, the Emacs Baby Hawk 2 HD features the Emacs Echo 1404 3700 kV motors which can handle up to 4 rest batteries when pushing the Emacs Scimitar 3.5 inch propellers. On the center of the frame, you can find a whoop style 25.5 by 25.5 mm all in one flight controller that features an F4 processor, came pre flashed with Beta Flight 4.2.5, and features an integrated 25 ampere BLLES 4 in 1 ESC. A 35 volts 470 microfarad capacitor is pre soldered to the battery pads, and the battery is going to be mounted on the top plate and connected to the flight controller using an XT30 battery connector. The Cadex Vista is mounted to the top plate using 20 by 20 mm M2 mounting holes. The Rush FPV Cherry antenna is mounted on the back of the frame and secured in the following manner. The Nebula Pro camera unit is mounted on the front of the frame using 3D printed TPU parts. Under the all-in-one flight controller, you can find a transparent plastic sheet which is going to help to protect the flight controller especially from water damage which is helpful in case you land on wet grass. The wheelbase of the frame is 154mm and it features a wide X pattern. The thickness of the bottom unibody plate is 5mm. The thickness of the top plate is 2mm. The distance between the bottom and top plates is 22.5mm and on the bottom plate you can only find 25.5x25.5mm 25 25 mounting holes. In addition, the weight of the Baby Hawk 2 HD without a battery is 144.5g. Including a GMB 1100 mAh Forest LHV battery, which is the one that I recommend to use with this setup, the total weight is 235.6 grams. And the total weight, including a GoPro 7 black naked camera and without a battery, is 181.7 grams. As for setting up the Emacs Baby Hawk 2 HD, first you will need to activate the Cadex Vista and update it to the latest available version. Then you will need to bind it with your DJI goggles. And in case you don't have any previous experience with the Vista system and you'd like to learn more about it, you can check out my review in this link over here. In addition, in case you have one of the Bind and Fly versions, simply bind the radio receiver with your radio controller. And in case you have the plug and play version and you'd like to use it with a different radio controller than DJI's, you will need to install your own radio receiver. And I've installed the Crossfire Nano SE receiver and connected it to UO2. You should note that in case you would like to use the DJI Radio Controller, you might need to wire the SBUS out pad from the Vista unit to the SBUS in pad of the flight controller, as on my version it wasn't pre-wired. As for beta flight configuration, here you can see how the port section is configured. The radio receiver is connected to UO2 and the Vista unit is connected to UO1. Under the configuration tab, most of the settings are set to the default values. In case you installed your own radio receiver, you should configure it. And by the way, for some reason, the soft seal option was enabled. And since it is not in use, you can simply disable it. Here you can see the power and battery settings. Next, under the PID tuning tab, we can see the PID related values. These are not the stock settings. 
and I can already tell you that as expected from Emacs, this quadcopter is properly tuned. Under the receiver tab, you should make sure that all the sticks and switches are working properly, then define your favorite flight modes and OSD elements, and you should be good to go. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the Emacs Babyhawk 2 HD. After testing it out, I can tell you that first of all, I really like its size, and I think that 3.5 inch quadcopters are going to become popular, as they seem to do great in terms of performance and flight time, but still maintain a relatively small form factor. In terms of flight time, you can expect between 5 to 6 minutes using an 850 mAh LiPo battery, and between 6 to 7.5 minutes using an 1100 mAh 4S LHV battery, which actually weighs almost the same as the 850 mAh LiPo battery, so in case you are in the market for a new battery, I recommend to go for the bigger battery, which will provide you with a longer flight time. In addition, the Babyhawk 2 HD could easily carry a naked GoPro 7 black camera without damaging the flight performance, and I got about 5 minutes of flight time, which is pretty good. As for durability, I crashed the Babyhawk 2 HD a couple of times, and it is still in one piece. The bottom unibody plate features a reinforced pattern, so it's not going to break easily, and the protection layer is a great add-on. On a bad crash, however, you might break this quadcopter, so in case you are a beginner, I recommend to purchase an extra button plate, because if one part is broken, you will need to replace it entirely, and I also think that it could have been better if the camera was positioned slightly deeper inside the frame, so the camera lens was better protected. In addition, you should consider getting a shorter battery velcro strap, as the provided one is just too long, and as you can see, it got chewed by the propellers. I also recommend to secure the battery leads to the standoff using a zip tie, so in case of a crash, if the battery leads are going to be pulled, the battery pads are not going to be ripped off. And for some reason, Emacs kept the motor wires too long, so as you can see, they are just tangling, so in case of a crash, they can be pulled off, so I would recommend to shorten them and properly secure them to the bottom plate. Two more things that are worth mentioning are that first of all, I didn't mount the Immortal T antenna in an ideal position in terms of radio signal, so it will be better off mounting the antenna on the front of the frame using a 3D printed part, however, I preferred this method because the antenna is better protected. The second issue is that due to this antenna mount, I didn't experience a very good video signal. Emacs probably chose it in order to extend the lifespan of the antenna, and in case you would like to get farther, I would recommend to get a longer version of the Rush FPV Cherry antenna. So overall, in my opinion, since the Emacs Babyhawk 2 HD is fun to fly, seems to be durable, and will provide you with a relatively long flight time, I think that it is suitable for both beginner and advanced pilots, and in case you have the DJI HD system and you are in the market for a new quadcopter, you should definitely consider getting it. I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.